Hello and welcome to the Richard Wesley Podcast episode, shoot, 293 for Tuesday, the 26th of April, 2022. This is a show where two lifelong friends of the guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and I'm not used to this because Kent doesn't want to do it more than once a month. What's up? Hey, um, I mean, <laughs> I want to do it every day. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to continue to call you out until you have free time. Then I'm busy. That way you can call me out. And just can, right. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. be yeah. a game for the next three years. Is, <laughs> that's, I mean, might as well keep the trend going. It's been the trend yeah. for... Uh, it's been the game for a couple of years now. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, keep it going. Um, How you been, man? Um, I'm I'm doing decently well now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Post COVID. Um, post COVID. Yeah, yeah. The world's not post COVID apparently. Uh, no, um, yeah, turns no, out. no, we we thought we were post COVID, uh, and then you caught COVID, and now we're yeah, we're, we're trans COVID still. Yeah, I, I am. I am very recently post COVID. <laughs> Um, yeah, man, uh, we had a great time in Austin and then, uh, I came home to discover that I had COVID. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I got it either on an airplane or in an airport and not in Austin proper because every single person that I encountered that I knew in Austin all tested negative. So pretty sure I got it after my departure. I, I thought I had it. Because I was just so completely wiped after coming back, mm. Um, mm-hmm. but I took like four tests and they were all negative. So, yeah, either I had faulty tests or I, I was just a schmuck and didn't have any energy. Yeah, well, I mean, you were on a very tight schedule. You were only in Austin for a few days, and it was kind of go 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 the whole time you were there. You didn't have yeah. a lot of downtime. Yeah, I had what three and a half weeks where I was in Vegas and Alaska and Washington and Austin. Yep. All in that three and a half weeks. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was exciting times. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So out of, out of those trips, which, which one did you have the most fun on? Oh, you're going to call me out. Um, <laughs> honestly, the, I had the most fun in Vegas with my wife. Yeah. Well, well that makes sense. Soccer. Yeah. Um, no, that makes sense. Not far beyond behind that was Austin, and then Washington, and then uh, Alaska is just that's where I live. So it's like not an adventure; it's just life. <laughs> yeah, it would be an adventure for most of us uh, if we yeah. went up there, but uh, not not so much for you these days. Yeah, I, I did. Um, I did install a GMRS GMRS radio in my truck. Okay, which and- um. So you know, you know CBs, right? Like in smoking the bandit and shit like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, current references, I like those. Yeah, well, that's the whole point. Uh, <laughs> CB is has been the standard for like a long time, and GMRS and FRS have recently become more of a standard, and that's kind of what everybody's going to. And I've been on it for a couple of years. You know, little ha- walkie talkies. You know, little handheld walkie talkies. And uh, finally got one, a nice one, and put it in my truck. And now I'm ready to go f- do some four-wheeling. Um, now it's just a matter of when the schedule is allowed because it's still soccer season. So most Saturdays when the four-by clubs are going out trailing and shit like that, uh, I'm, I'm shooting soccer games with my son. So, <laughs> Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. When does, when does soccer end? Memorial Day weekend is finals. Okay, and that's in that's next month, right? It's end of May, yeah. Yeah. Most of our home games are done, so most of the games from here on out are going to be down in Anchorage, which is going to add some fun to the whole thing. Um, two weeks from now, I'm heading up to Fairbanks to, I guess next week, because we're on Tuesday now. Uh, two weeks from now, I'm, so next weekend, not this coming weekend, next weekend, I'm heading up to Fairbanks because the, they have two games up there every year, and we're heading up there that weekend. So that'll be a nice trip. Nice six hour drive in a straight line around and through mountains. Uh, hey, thanks for the uh, resub. W's got his one. Um, yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try to do this um, a little more than once a month. But um, yeah, well, we're yeah. I'm not gonna promise anything on the on the schedule, but yeah. Um, yeah, man. Well, that's 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 cool. Um, yeah. So Austin, we went to Austin. 
Um, yeah, you were only there for a few days. I was there for a full week. Yep. Um, I started my my Austin adventure out like I like, like it's kind of become tradition for me now. First thing I did was went and got a haircut. <laughs> um, so it's uh, it's it's a tradition I like. I've got shitty <laughs> barbers in Alamogordo, <laughs> and Austin <laughs> has a plethora of really great barbers. So I, I, I found a barber that I really liked and I've just been going back to those guys. Um, so that's how I started out. Um, next thing on the agenda is always to get barbecue. And that actually, that actually kind of became a little bit of a frustrating adventure. Uh, my, my haircut was at 10 AM and I was like, this will be great. I should be out by 11. It should be you know, like, you know, great time to go get some lunch. Perfect timing for barbecue. Uh, once I had finished my haircut, I opened up my Google maps and searched barbecue What's the nearest barbecue. Lucky me. I'm in Austin. So I was like within a block of, right. Of barbecue. Right. And it was, it was highly recommended on, on, uh, the Google maps thing. I was like, hell yeah. About me to get, about to get me some good cue. Uh, so I go over there. It's like a quarter till 11 at this point and they don't open till 11. So I had to kind of. Sit around for about 15 minutes, played some Pokemon Go. <laughs> Mouth starts watering. I'm ready to go. Want some Q. Doors open. I go in. And uh, uh, you, when you first walk into this place, it's kind of like a bar area. And uh, the gentleman that's uh, sitting behind the bar is like, uh, uh, what can I get for you? And I was like, well, uh, hoping to get some barbecue. And he goes, ooh, um, it's Tuesday. Uh, we don't serve barbecue on Tuesdays. Uh, but if you come back tomorrow, I was like, son of a bitch. Uh, so since I was there, I, I went so ahead what and had hurt my first more? Austin beer. What hurt more? Not being able to get barbecue or having waited an extra 15 minutes just to not get barbecue? Uh, not getting the barbecue was the pain, the true pain. Uh, but the salt in the wound was the was the extra weight. Um yeah, so I was like, all right. So I went ahead and had a beer uh, with the guy, had a nice little chat, uh, then went and searched for more, more barbecue. And the nearest barbecue spot, I navigated to it as a place I'd never heard of. And I was like, um, okay. So when I finally get there, it's like, I don't know, probably like a 10, 12 minute walk. Yeah. So I finally get over to the place and well, at least where where Google Maps says it is. And I'm like, what the fuck? I can't find it. Like, it's like, I'm in a parking lot of a, of a Whole Foods. Where is this freaking barbecue spot? <laughs> so, so then I discover that the barbecue spot is inside the Whole Foods. Oh, I was okay. Like, oh my God. I was like, okay. All right. So let me, let me go into this Whole Foods. And uh, this Whole Foods was absolutely gigantic. It's like- this uh, one on 6th Street? Um, I think it was actually, it was either on fifth or sixth. I think yeah, it was. I think, I think it's between fifth and sixth. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. I think so. I think so. It's like uh, way out there. Like you got to hike to get there. When you get to whole, oh, Foods, yeah. you know, you yeah. are not in the neighborhood of the bar. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so anyway, so I go in there and they, they've got a ton of food selections. They've got, uh, this, the most massive salad bar I think I've ever seen. Uh, they got a, just, a sandwich counter and they've got all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, I need to make my way to the barbecue. It's all the way in the back. And I was like, cool. I'm going to get myself a brisket sandwich. That sounds good today. Uh, guy takes a sweet ass time, gets me a brisket sandwich, go up to the front of the store, pay for it. Then I go s sit down um, in like the, you know, the little area in the front of the whole foods. And, um, it was probably the shittiest barbecue I've ever had in my life. It was such a disappointment. So, so to answer chat room's question, yes, being in a Whole Foods should have been red flag for a barbecue joint. Right. Yep. Yep. But the next, the next closest barbecue spot was like another 15 minutes and it was hot as shit. And I really just wanted some fucking barbecue right now. Uh, but I did learn my lesson. I should have taken the extra 15 minute walk. <laughs> And gotten some good barbecue. Yep. Uh oh, man. But I had barbecue like probably five more times when yeah. I was in Austin, and all of it was amazing. So Th this was probably the first trip to Austin that I've taken where I didn't get barbecue. Oh, I'm so sad for you. 
Yeah. So I, it just, it just didn't work out. Like we got barbecue at the Airbnb and I just, I, I ate while I was out and then we got back and we ate on the way back. And then like, it just, all those barbecues just sitting there and I wasn't hungry. Every time I knew there was barbecue in the fridge, I was like not hungry because we had either just eaten mm. or we were getting ready to go somewhere to eat. And we still had all this goddamn barbecue in the fridge. <laughs> And I was like, Fuck. yep. Oh, like, you know. Yeah, I think I ate on that twice. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, that was a lot of food. It was pretty good too. Man, sorry you missed out. Um, so I arrived on Thursday, and of course we held our 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 typical ritual misery event to kick off Diamond Club weekend. Yep, at Darwin's um, on six at Darwin's. Uh, they do not serve food there anymore. Yeah, which, unfortunately. They had if really you know me and Darwin's was it was a punch in the gut <laughs> that that made me very much sad. Yeah, yeah, uh, but that was a fun event. Uh, we had probably I don't know what would you say about fifteen folks show up. Um, like Somewhere yeah, between ten 15, and fifteen. Fifteen twenty. One two yeah. three four five six seven eight nine <laughs> ten eleven twelve thirteen. Well, I got thirteen in this picture, and I think. A couple showed up after that. I know Tay showed up after that picture. So we're looking at like 15 yeah. people or so. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. I'm, it, was, um, uh, it was expensive as fuck, but it was good. Yeah. 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 We didn't, we didn't put on any sort of show. We didn't do games. We just kind of showed up and people joined yeah. us and we had a, we had a blast for about, uh, what, about four hours, I think. We probably hung out at Darwin's. Yeah. We were there for a good minute. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, got got yeah. nice and uh, nice and tipsy, and then I don't remember leaving Darwin's. Like, what did we do when we left Darwin's? Oh yeah, I um, do. I remember because we we went over to the parking garage and got in Dark's car and drove back to the to the Airbnb. Yeah, well, we spent McDonald's probably. On the way. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. McDonald's was kind of a that was kind of a shit show experience. Womp womp. Um, basically, a clown car uh, in a drive through for way too long. <laughs> To to get food that didn't take into uh, account everyone's um, dietary needs, so yeah, it's, right. it's, it's a shit show. Yeah, shit show clown car. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had some uh, some half drunk, if not completely drunk, uh, individuals. Uh, they were cranky and tired from travel, and <laughs> it was just it was uh, it was a it was yep. a good group dynamics um, moment. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It was it was great. It was wonderful. Yep. Um, um, then Saturday, though Saturday, yep. man, Saturday was busy. Yeah, as, yeah. as Debbie well, Scott's one says, "Who serves breakfast at two a.m. at McDonald's?" Every McDonald's should be serving breakfast at two a.m. Every McDonald's should be sh- serving breakfast and everything at two a.m. It should be uh, serving like, all the things at two a.m. Yeah, precisely. Like it's peak drunk time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, fr- so before the big event on Saturday, we had a, like a pregame type event on Friday, which was a wonderful opportunity to meet oh, some people right. for the first time and get a ton of pictures. Um, yeah, a really good time. That was at the Fang and Feather, uh, part of the Wizard Academy, uh, complex. <laughs> um, every really time cool. someone asked me what that place was, I was like, I don't know, something, the feather, like, uh, the fool and yeah. feather, the... The foul it's got like feather, it's got like three feather. names, yeah. <laughs> uh, the the place of many names in Southwest Austin, <laughs> sure. Yeah, a bang a feather, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so so that was a blast. And then Saturday, of course, um, was the big Founders Day event um, at the Modern Rogue World Headquarters. Uh, that was a blast. We we started out volunteering so we had to get there a little bit earlier than than most and we helped with the parking situation and and whatever other little tasks that Corey had for us um Mm -hmm. and then finally we got into the event and my gosh the sun was shining the wind was blowing (laughs) i had the most chapped lips i have had probably in the past decade (laughs) you're not you're not kidding at all Yep, and probably the reddest neck that I've had in at least a couple of years. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. It was, um, man, lots of, lots of, lots of really fun events. Lots of people that uh, I hadn't seen in a long time. Lots of people that I'm meeting for the first time. Yep. Uh, some folks I had met um, the the night previous. Um, it was, it was a blast, man. 
Yeah. I, so I, I had kind of a deal going on with, with, uh, with should where I would go around and take pictures and then, you know, basically give the pictures to him. Mm-hmm. And, um, so I was basically doing that the entire day, just taking pictures. I took 1400 pictures over the course of the day, 1406 mm-hmm. over the weekend, I guess. So it was probably 1300 of them were from that day, but 1400 total. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was, uh, it was great to watch the shows. It was great to challenge myself to try to capture the event and it was one of those things where there were different groups colliding because we had Diamond Club. We also mm-hmm. had uh, the Rogies. Or the Rogues. Is that, is, that, is, is, that their, is that what we're calling them? <laughs> I, that's what I was calling them. I was calling them Rogies. Um, yeah. Okay. So you had the, the Diamond Club, you had the Rogies, and then you had um, uh, just, what, what was the other group? Oh, the, the, the Schoolies from Scam School. Oh right, yeah, yeah, the yeah, so, Scam School, Scam Nation, yeah, yeah, and there was even a there was a re- even a handful of folks that were there to see Justin uh, from the, you know they knew him from DTNS and PX3. Yep, and there's there's somebody there was just there for Heaton for Andrew Heaton. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he was he was barely in attendance. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't even performing. He was just going to be there. Um, yeah, there and yeah. there's there's a few. Oh, and people the scoops. There. there was also yep, the, scoops the scoops as yep. well. Yep, uh, the, the scoop troop scoops. or the scoopies or whatever name you want to give them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I had never experienced uh, Scoops Fest or you know Ice Cream Social or anything, um, because when when Brian and Justin have done events with them, I've always ended up missing those events and or skipping those events, like not listening to them or whatever else, you know. Mm-hmm. And that was my first experience with them that day, and they were hilarious. That was a great time. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're pretty fun. Um, I haven't experienced a whole lot of their stuff. I think I've seen most of the collabs they've done with Brian and Justin. Um, I'm pretty sure I haven't seen all, and I've seen next to nothing outside of of that. But yeah, they're um, yeah they're they're a fun bunch. Their fandom or their their the scoops, I guess we'll just say, uh, remind me a lot of of early diamond club with the enthusiasm and, and um, group participation type stuff. Uh, when they put a, when they put a word out to the audience saying, Hey, uh, it'd be cool if you guys did this thing. Uh, they really do it in droves as you have some photographic evidence of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's so, so they, I, well, for, for those that don't know what we're talking about, so uh, Brape is an is kind of like a, uh, I guess it was an inside joke. Uh, it kind of it started as a, a funny suggestion that turned into a, a big joke, and then it kind of became the joke that wouldn't die. Uh, it was the the name for Brian's property uh, would be Brape, which stands for Brushwood Recording and Podcasting Enclave. And the only reason I can say that uh, so. Uh, confidently is because I've got a sticker um, right here that, that it was given to me by um, I don't know if it was Matt or Mattingly. It was one of the, one of the, the ice cream social dudes uh, came up to me after, after one of their bits and handed that over to me. Uh, but the, but the scoops made, I think, what was it? 54 plaques, brape plaques for Brian and Justin. Um, absolutely insane. Yeah. Yep. It was uh it was pretty crazy. And it was yep. a lot of fun cuz I oh, I went back there and I was I was watching with them as far as you know them opening the box cuz it came in this huge box. Mm-hmm. And it it was kind of ridiculous how much creativity had gone into those little brape signs. Um it's really, really good. I yeah, and enjoyed. and like the whole range of sizes too. Like, there's some really big ones. There's some super duper tiny ones, like thumbnail, literal thumbnail size, and everything in between. Yep, all um, si- all styles and and everything. We'll, and, we'll get that here and in, in building here. materials. Um, all all like everything. They're mm-hmm. just wonderful. Um, and so here's one thing that I want to show before we go any further. Yeah, uh, is, well, and 
And also, well, before before you say what you're going to say, um, I just want to say to folks that are listening to this as an audio podcast, um, I highly recommend getting on YouTube and, and checking out this video because it's going to be a very uh, photo heavy episode. We're going to be showing a lot of stuff yep. on screen that you're going to that you're going to miss out on if you if you're only listening to this on audio. Yep. And of course the links will be in the, in the show notes for the website where all these images are brought up, but you know, if you don't want to have to go fumble through there. Yep. All right. Here is one of the few pictures I had intended to take when I got there. Like this is, I had planned this from the get go. Mm -hmm. And that is yes. The, uh, a high res picture of the diamond, the founders club plaque. Mm-hmm. This um, is the this is the plaque uh, with the names of everyone who well joined the Founders Club, which was the uh, kind of an investment vehicle uh, for for Brian to get community involvement and in helping fund the development of the the property, the brain, and, if you will. <laughs> a a small correction: it's not everyone who contributed; it's everyone who contributed at a at a minimum level or higher. I think right, it was the fifty dollar right. level. You got your name on the plaque. Um, yeah, that sounds right. That sounds right. Yeah, and this was a couple of years ago. I think what two, two and a half, three years ago, probably when. Yep. When this um, push was happening. Yep. Um, yeah, it's got it's got a lot of names on there. A lot yep. of names. <laughs> <laughs> to include Kit from RMP and Amos from RMP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, so just so you know, anytime you think that I don't think about you, there's a reason your name's on here first, because I want to make sure that I've had your name on the submission form when I submitted, because I, I did, we did do two, two, uh, uh, $50 donations to make sure both of us got on there. And here's yep. right here, Kent of Ritual Misery, and then Amos of Ritual Misery. Those are not two separate entries. That is one entry alphabetized by the first letter K. <laughs> So instead of Amos <laughs> being way up here, right, way down here with Kent, because they saved it as a single entry and it went in there as Kent from Ritual Misery dash Amos from Ritual Misery. Yep. Yep. If I know it's going to be like that, it could have just been like Kent and Amos from Ritual Misery, which just would have saved us 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I I think the money went to a good cause, uh, but <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. Yep. Oh man. Yeah. Um, no, I think it, it 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 makes me feel better that that we we paid uh, twice because technically, like, I'm not supposed to be in any of the Founders Day. Um, yeah, we got two rocks. Uh, correspondence and whatnot. Uh, if I you know if I hadn't paid or whatever, so. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel a lot better about it. We only um, got one coin though, and I don't know why we only got one coin. But you're not getting my coin. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Um, I figure I did the work. I get the coin. <laughs> yeah. So I think. Well, actually, so before we go into more of the Founders Day uh, stuff that that we did, uh, you guys, the majority of our housemates, uh, to include you, left on Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, so you didn't have the opportunity to do what me and Curtis and Debbie Scott is one and a few others, um, were able to do. We went to a play put on by a small, uh, theater troupe in Northern Austin starring one Taylor Allen, uh, AKA our, our, uh, frequent guest Tay Allen. Uh, it was a ton of fun. Uh, she did amazing. Her male co-host or co um, co-star was also absolutely incredible. And then the rest of the trip was was really good as well. But I but I want to definitely highlight Tay and and uh, I don't remember the the male actor's name, but uh, they were absolutely a blast to watch. Uh, the play was great. Um, lots of energy. It was it was uh, a lot of fun. And unfortunately. I didn't upload the pictures I've got of that event, but I do have, I can put them somewhere. Um, I can, you know what, I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to throw them on Instagram right after this show. And then I'm, I'm going to use my what? Instagram as wait. my, um, wait, wait, 
you on Instagram? <gasps> yeah, I've been on Instagram for quite a while, but I haven't posted yeah. anything there in but, probably but a couple But you've been of years. shunning social media. Yeah, I have been, except um, somebody... Somebody invited me to look at something on Instagram a week or two ago, and now now that I opened it on my phone, I get all the notifications and stuff that prompt me, "Hey, this person commented on something." Oh, oh okay, let me get it, let me get in there again. So I'm kind of I'm kind of dipping my toes back into social media a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, social media is the dairy of our souls. It's, it's <laughs> okay. It just keeps sucking us back in. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm actually, I was trying to find what my, my username is on here. There uh, we go. Okay. It's just Del Noche. It's just Del yeah, Noche. Del Noche. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes I'm Del Noche 77 in some places. I'm, my should, Twitter is should, RM underscore Del Noche. Yeah. You have too many names. You should fix that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, at least you don't have that problem, Ethan. King. No, at all. Uh, I don't get cold. <laughs> Multiples and multitudes of names in the same email. Um, and yes, W Skies One, I can fine tune those notifications, but I haven't I haven't been in that, the app long enough to. That requires a time to investment. He's so. just not willing to put forth right. at this time. That's right. <laughs> so it's like the the fallacy. Like I don't, you know, I'm not spending the time to fix that because I just don't have time for that. But I still get the notifications, and I spend more time by clicking the notification and looking at the the new photos, and so on and so forth. But yep. so far it hasn't been a drain because, like the the big reason that I I stopped looking at Twitter and Facebook is because I always felt bad after after I spent any amount of time in there because there was just a lot of shitty stuff and and what I mean there's some good stuff there, but but there was always something that would either piss me off or make me sad or whatever. And uh, my experience with Instagram has not been that. It's a, it's been 100% positive experience. So I'm not super eager to remove it from my life again. So, <laughs> so it, it's here to stay for now, at least. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, so, the, so some of those pictures will go up on my Instagram, um, which makes me uh, think about uh, your Instagram and some wonderful photos that you've put there as well. I think you're Ethan Kane, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and you've put a much larger cache of photos in a different place. Uh, can you tell us where those are and what else people might find there? Anthony Lemos.com. Speaking yeah. of multiple names. Yeah. 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 The, so Anthony is spelled like Anthony Lemos is L E M O S. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that's where I, I've been using it for a while to put all my my the photography I want to put out there on there. Um, I need to. I actually need to build a portfolio page because I'm trying to get like you know press passes and shit. <laughs> You're right. Um, right. Yep. So yeah, an AnthonyLemos.com. You can click on uh, whatever you got to click on. I don't know. Click on the thing. I think it's blog. Is it blog or it's new blog post? And the I think it's post. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you'll get to uh, a post that says Founders Club Weekend. And that will also, it'll be linked in the show notes if you just want to jump straight to it because, you know, we do that. Um, but yeah, I, I posted all the pictures on there and I I think I did, I got some pretty good pictures overall. Yes, I absolutely agree. And we're going to, we're going to talk about a few of them. Um but yeah, so a lot of the pictures you took were snapshots, right? So basically just a, a quick, um, like, oh, that looks cool. Click, um, you know, not a whole lot of like uh, thought going into construction of the photo and all of that sort of stuff. Just like, hey, this is yep. a moment. Uh, the, those three people being together, it's a great moment. I got to take the picture now. Uh, but you also uh, did take some shots where you spent time constructing it and mm -hmm. uh You've got some amazing stuff, and uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna highlight a, a couple of those. Um, despite your modesty, uh, we are we're gonna we're gonna talk about a couple of those, and maybe maybe if you're willing, we'll talk about a little a little bit about how you uh, did some of the construction and and so forth. But uh, uh, mostly, I want to talk about like some of the uh, some of the moments that you captured, and uh, maybe uh, maybe you and I can tell like a story or two that kind of gives some context. Uh, that that folks wouldn't get just by just by seeing the picture by itself. Yeah, 
Well, let, let's uh, let's start off with this one here, and I'll let you describe it to uh, the audio listeners that are, you know, still hanging out. Yeah. Okay. So this was taken at the uh, the pre event, the RMP event on Thursday at Darwin's. Uh, there's a good group of us in here um, doing the traditional thing, getting close together and throwing up diamonds. Um, we've got, uh, so me and you, of course, we've got Craig, Mike TV, uh, Open Bayou, um, Curtis Rewardian, LaRock. Curtis LaRock, Waffleophagus, BioCal, W. Scott is one, uh, Ben Franklin, and then uh, the new guy to our group that, that came over from Modern Rogue. <laughs> Mike is his name. I think he goes, he goes by Rat something on social media yeah. Yeah. rats rat catcher rat jump rat jump he, he was the rogie in the group something like that yeah uh nice guy he's a fellow air force veteran um i had a, a few good chats with him but uh yeah a great great little photo there of the of the gang yeah rat uh, underscore jumper is uh is mike so nice nice all right um this is uh yeah this is just a group photo it's like a it's a mandatory thing. Anytime you have a Diamond Club event, uh, just to start off the weekend or whatever, it's got to be there. So, yeah. Uh, all right. What's the next one you want to look at here, dude? Um. So scrolling through, there's some some pictures of Tay. Tay showed up after we took that particular group photo. Yep. We've got uh, pictures of of W. Scott as one doing some awkward white boy dancing. Uh, that was <laughs> that was pretty good. Yep. There we go. That's a great one there beautiful this, shot of this him. one this one's more of a uh like <laughs> I, I like it it's got the three people in it and stuff but um it, you know it, it, i really i really like this one right here yes <laughs> yes i don't willie looks like he's doing some sort of like a charlie brown dance i think it's it, like the dance that schroeder yeah did, right it's or linus it's, linus i think it's what linus did it was something <laughs> But the important part is he was having a good time. That's all that matters. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead so. and make go ahead and blow up that picture of, of me and you uh being goofy in the in the booth there. Yeah. We always have to take at least one like just really stupid goofy picture. And that, yep. that happened to be the one that night. Yeah. And yeah. this is uh this is actually taken by Tay while she uh grabbed my camera and was walking around with it. Uh, yeah. rather rather precariously. Yeah, I don't know who is more afraid, <laughs> you or me. Like it should have been you, but I seemed to care more than you did, and I like ran after her. I was like, I was like, hey, let let me let me please please let me take this out of your hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. All right, so we're st still scrolling here. Um, on Friday, I went to Jerry's place with Tom. And we did a DTNS episode, and I managed to grab uh, one picture. This, I grabbed several, but this is the one that, that seemed appropriate for release. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Jury talking to Tom while they're on the show. Um, it, was, it was a good time. It was, it was a really fun time. Yep, right on. It's an angle of, of Jury's studio I don't think I've seen before. Or at least not, at least not at that angle and um, right condition. Yeah. Um. Well, that's a, speaking of jury, that's a great picture of him right there in the middle. Yes. You think yeah. so? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> him making this uh, weird face. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm. Sh I'm sure he would not think it's a great picture, but uh, <laughs> which is why I like it. I think. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Probably. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, here's a picture uh, of you talking with Ali Spagnola. Oh, yeah. Yep. Ali Spagnola was somebody that I met actually on Tuesday, the day I got there. Uh, that was a big surprise. She, uh, we, we went out there, uh, Willie and I went out there for the great night taping, and she was the surprise guest, and we had no idea she was going to be there. So that was, that was really cool. And here's another one of you talking with Invisible Wife, Bonnie yep. Brushwood. Yep, uh, the the amazingly photogenic invisible person. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't think I've ever seen a bad picture of Bonnie taken by anyone ever. Uh, she's just a she's just a, a very beautiful person that the camera just loves. 
Or all of us are just afraid to release a picture of her that doesn't show her in her best light. <laughs> well, because because she's threatened. Well, I know over the years I've taken I've probably taken dozens of pictures of her over the over the years of and yeah, I've never captured a bad photo of her. So <laughs> Um, speaking of photogenic, Shane. yeah. Yep. Speaking we got of Shane Eros. Yeah. This, this man. This is a beautiful man. Uh, that yeah. Also cannot take a bad picture. Yeah. We 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 have another picture of him later on. That's uh, it's pretty fun. Here he's just drinking a beer, sitting there in a blue blazer or sport coat or whatever the hell that thing is. Yeah, looking like he's posing for a magazine or something. Like it's 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 kind of ridiculous. Yeah, he's actually. Just, He's in conversation with somebody, but I didn't capture their whole head. Like their chin was buried behind the wooden plank. So I just, I cropped it to fit just Shane and it looked yep. amazing. It was like, that's, that's perfect. That's the picture I should have taken the first Yeah, time. it was, yeah, it was completely candid. Like it's <laughs> like, what? oh, amazing. Mike, oh, and here we go. With uh, Isabella and, uh, and Lil Moppet. Lil Moppet. Yep. And, uh, and then, Lil Moppet's on Instagram as well. I think it's Lil underscore Moppet. Um, yeah, I got, she yeah. is a little teacup puppy that's, um, entirely way too, too small to maintain its own heat. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and just too cute for words. Uh, thus her Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a good picture here that I like of, uh, Brett Weaver looking at me. Uh, this was uh, might be the first picture taken of of me and him, and it was kind of we were posing, and then I don't know what happened right here if he was doing this on purpose to look intimidating at me, but <laughs> it it kind of looks like you are posing for a picture, and he's like, "What the fuck are you doing standing right. this close to me?" Right? <laughs> yes, yes. I think it's great. It's pretty brilliant. Yep. Yep. <laughs> There's several pictures throughout uh, your collection here that I think uh, people could definitely use as their their new user pick for uh, like for social media profiles. Uh, there's definitely a couple of pictures of Tom that I really like. There's one or two of Brian Brushwood. Oh, there, there's one right there of Brian that I think is just that would be a great uh, social media profile pick. Um. Oh, oh, uh, tell us about the game that you were kind of playing with with Ali Spagnola throughout the weekend. Oh, she, uh, I, I went to take some pictures of her on Friday night at, the, at this Fang and Feather event. And she kept telling me that I couldn't catch her without her seeing that I was going to take a picture and ruining mm. it. So there was no, there was going to be uh, no, um, uh, like, no candids. Really. Candid, there you go. That's the word I was looking for. No candid yeah. pictures of her. Like, and, uh, I accepted the challenge and to varying levels of success, I I think it did pretty well. Yeah, you actually, you got a couple of really great candidates of her actually. So you, you definitely won that challenge. Uh, yeah, that's a candid one there. Um, it's not out of focus, but not necessarily framed um, great because you were kind of like sniper, sniper attack yep. kind of thing. Um Oh, but but one that is framed great that I love is the next one just above that, which is Tom Merritt uh, sitting in, in a dark corner that I think is uh, just a, it's it's an it's an amazing picture. Like this looks like something that would be in uh, like a portfolio that he would put together for uh, for like headshots and uh, stuff like that. Well, I don't want to say too much but hopefully it looks like the cover of a podcast like to I, cover I, art absolutely podcast. <laughs> I, th I think it's perfect for that yes <laughs> yeah Curtis that, says d deaf a press photo yeah yeah this is um th this was an intentional photo that we had planned out before heading out to Austin that um, Tom and I had talked about uh, once I got there the the original idea kind of got scrapped because there just wasn't room and I wasn't going to try to clear out an entire room for the picture. But then I happened mm. to look back behind the bar and this little area was there, but there are always people in it. And then one time I looked back there, there was no one there. I looked over at Tom. Tom was had just ended his conversation with somebody who was getting ready to go to the bar to get another drink. So I was like, Tom, let's go do this. And got him back here. And we, we only... 
we probably could have spent more time back here to get the picture framed a little better and, and, and set up kind of exactly how I wanted it. But the cleaning crew was back there and they were mm. working their asses off and I was not trying to interrupt or block them from getting their jobs done. So mm. we were trying to be as courteous as possible with them. And uh, I didn't want to be in their way too long. So we got some pictures. And once I realized that I had one that, that would work, I we left. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was a great one. So, so yeah, well done. And there's, uh, there's some the little moppets. moppets. Yeah. Yeah. And this, this one, you shared this one somewhere. I think it was in a discord and uh, mm-hmm. got lots of, lots of love in there. Um, yeah. This dog is like, the dog does half the work for you as a photographer. The The dog is incredibly photogenic. Like it's, it's ridiculous. You say that, but this picture... There were about 30 frames of this exact picture in just slight <laughs> different variations. And this is the one that I settled it on because the eyes were looking at the camera and the tongue was sticking out. Yeah. And yeah, it, yeah. And that's this, this right here took 30 frames or so over a span of maybe 10 seconds. Yeah. To actually get the picture that we wanted. <laughs> yeah. Cute little so, dog. Yeah. Um, there's Andrew Heaton, and here's yep, the there he is. Allie actually caught me trying to get a picture of her. Right. Yeah. My my favorite one, I think, is the next one you're going to show. Uh, of oh, her oh. catching you. Oh, this one right here. Yeah, For that one's perfect. Yep. <laughs> it's pretty great. Yeah. And this is another one where I had taken about four frames in the first frame. She hadn't seen me yet. The two in the middle were kind of transitional. And then this was the last frame. And this is the <laughs> one that I, uh, the, the one that I kept because it was, it, it's the one that it, 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 she, like told the story. Yeah. So. Yep. Yep. I love it. And then, yeah, here's the puppy that you missed. Yeah, Pippi Longstocking. Um, I, yeah, I missed her. Uh, Curtis said that he said that he missed Pip as well. Um, I think a lot of people missed Pippi Longstocking because uh, Bonnie only had her there for a brief time. And she was only outside for even a briefer part of that time. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, here we go. Here's Shane. Oh yeah, this is a funny picture of Shane. You you captured him eating some of the record breaking cotton candy sculpture. Yep. And uh you've <laughs> so so Shane doesn't really like his picture being taken. He doesn't like yeah. it to be the, the focus of attention like that. But what happened with this one is he was eating popcorn or eating the 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 the, the cotton candy, and I mm. got a couple frames of him while he was eating it. And he caught me getting the pictures. So then he went ahead and posed for a bite of cotton candy for me. And this is the one that turned out. Oh, I see. Okay. The other, the I other thought it was a, totally candid. The other one was kind of at an awkward angle. So this is actually one of the posed ones. Because in the original, he was eating the pink cotton candy. Yeah, that's so. great. Oh, and that's, yeah, for, for folks that aren't familiar. Um, yeah, thanks for the reminder. W. Scott is one. Uh, so... Ali Spagnola uh, broke the record for the the world's largest uh, ca- cotton candy eh, cotton candy sculpture, and uh, you can go to Ali Spagnola's YouTube channel or the Modern Rogue YouTube channel. Both of them have a video up about it. Um, so yeah, go 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 check it out there uh, to find out more about that. Yep, and here is that cotton candy sculpture. Yes, was it? 37 pounds 37 or something like pounds. that. And yeah. here is, I believe, Callie reaching in to rip the heart out. Yeah. Because she's ruthless. Yep. Yep. She got the the first the first bit, and she got to pick uh, where she got it from. And she wanted to rip the heart out. <laughs> this, this is a picture of Brian and Bonnie that I wish I had my fl- fill or my flash in available to me at this time so I could fill in some of the shadows because this is a great picture of them, but the shadows keep it from being remarkable. Right. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. They both look great. You, you framed it. Perfect. Um, Yeah. It's a great photo. 
Yeah. All right. Here he becomes the the brave show. Oh, Bonnie uh, in front of all our artwork. Let's not pass that. I like this one right here. Yes. That one's wonderful. So she actually had a art display in the background, which I thought was great. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't her event, but she like they knew that people would want to see some of her art, and she had a lot of cool stuff back there. Absolutely, yep, agreed. And I'm not going to go through all the break stuff, so I'm just going to show this one right here. Oh, there's yeah, a handful of them on display. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are some yeah. of the standouts. I think these are I, they were all great, but like. These, yeah, these are some of the, some of the like ones that really pop. Yeah, and then we get on to the actual event. Yep. Oh, got the Curtis. Malort. Uh, and then we got, <laughs> yeah, then we got a great picture of Curtis. Yeah, I so Curtis uh, wearing this this uh, floppy sun hat, uh, and I had no idea where it came from, and I still don't know. And I don't know where it went. <laughs> well, hopefully it was returned to its rightful owner. <laughs> it, 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 it poofed into existence, allowed me to get a picture, and then poofed out of existence is what happened. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, yeah, and Curtis says that he forgets. So, <laughs> and, and here's your uh, your Malort. Ali Spagnola drinking the Malort. She took it better than Brian did. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Allie is just a beast. Brian is a is a performer, <laughs> and Allie's a beast. <laughs> so. Yeah, and here she is actually performing. Yeah, yep. Um, yeah. Oh, and you got so speaking of performances, you've got uh, a couple of really cool pictures of of Mike TV in here. A couple of cool angles, uh, kind of like upward. Upward yeah, facing I, uh, or so upward looking I, angles. I, I recently got a, a new lens. It's a 15 to 35 uh, f 2.8. And I haven't really used it for anything besides uh, landscapes. So mm. I wanted to really try to use that for some close up photography. Unfortunately, it really distorts things around the edge. So if you get too close to the subject, if if they're reaching too far from the center of the frame, they're, like their arm will get distorted, you know, and it'll be really long. Uh, yeah. But if you step back for, far enough, then the person ends up in the front and then you get this weird like warping effect around them without warping them. So I kind of use that to my advantage. I got low to the ground and I got some pictures kind of looking up at the artists and I thought those were really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Agreed. Uh, Mike, Mike put on a hell of a show uh, during that as well. He did. It did. Yeah, this this is kind of what I'm talking about. This is probably about as far as I could go without getting some distortion. You can already see like his foot looks a little different than the rest of his body. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Um, it's got that skater look, like the you know, we can see the bottom real close in the, you know, yeah. Right, um, right. And then here, and you know who this guy is right here. I don't yeah, know who it Trey is. Warren. Trey oh, Warren. Oh yeah, there Trey Warren. Go. Yep. Yep. Great guy, um, amazing musician. Um, he's he's got a really cool property, not like right next door, but somewhere somewhere in the neighborhood of um, of the Modern Rogue uh, spot, um, which is really cool too. And he's got a, a really nice music studio out there as well. Um, yeah, yeah, good stuff. Uh, Trey, he, Trey's he, good people. He really accented uh, Mike TV's songs, like. Give it, give it a, a base to allow Mike TV to kind of work around and and customize and like do his little frills and his and you know things like that. Um, mm -hmm. it, it was it was a good show. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And well, and then one thing about the show, so there was a girl. Uh, gosh, was she probably ten or eleven years old, maybe twelve? Uh, that was a big fan of Modern Rogue and uh, Scam Nation and and all of that. And uh, her parents, as part of spring break, I think it was, uh, brought her out there and she got to take pictures with a lot of like her, you know, celebrities and, um, you know, had a, had a great time. Well, her and her parents were like, I was standing probably five feet away from her and her parents uh, during Mike TV's set 
And any of you all that have heard Mike TV's music, you'll know that um, it can get a little blue at times. And I don't mean blue <laughs> as in sad. Um, yeah, like uh, uh, raunchy comedy is um, a, a lot of his songs, and he was playing a lot of his his like big hits, his bangers, his bops, the ones that you know the crowd favorites, and almost all of them are very blue. And I happen to look over at the family just as Mike goes into fuck, 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 motherfucker, fuck, fuck, and. I- <laughs> Like the par- the girl was unfazed. The parents are like looking at each other, looking at the daughter. <laughs> it's just like, oh dear God. <laughs> it's good stuff. Well, what what hath hell wrought? Um, yes. <laughs> here, here's the picture of Bryce. I really should have tried to get this picture earlier when there's more light, and I would it would have been a little clearer. Mm. But Bryce working at the console. Um, yep, just plying doing, his doing trade. His- yeah, doing his his audio production thing. Um, mm-hmm. It was good to see Bryce. It was good to crack a couple of jokes and and things like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and, and then, then of, course, of course, Jomo and the Possum Posse. Yes, you want to talk about a great show like yeah. that? They put on a like a full concert, basically that that you would have paid. Like, I think any one of us at that event would have paid 50 bucks to see that show. Like, it was fantastic. They are known for doing Diamond Club events, and usually they come in with about three songs. And every time they do that, yeah, yeah, every time they do that, it's like, gosh, they just set all this fucking equipment up and they're only going to be here for three songs. Like, that's, (laughs) yeah, right. Irritating, you know? No, they were out there for a full hour doing songs. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, really, really, really good. Um, they sounded great. They they uh, had good comic bits. Uh, Jomo even did like basically stunt performance uh, toward the end of the set. Uh, it was it was great. It was fantastic. I, I know there's video in existence out there, uh, but I don't know that. Well, I'm pretty sure none of it is public. Uh, at least not yet. I'm hoping that at least some of it ma- makes its way into some something. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of things that are now in the public that should be made into something, uh, this is this is an amazing photograph that you took. Um, and and I, if you would please describe this this photo. This is Jomo and the Possum Posse. Uh, in black and white from the rear behind the set facing towards the crowd with each of the band members in silhouette. And the only lights you can really see are the edges of them. Um, so they're, they're, they're basically black silhouettes with white edges in front of a nearly black foreground. And this this picture right here, the reason the reason Ken's tripping out about it, and the reason I'm tripping out about it, is because this is one of the one of the few times I've tr- I've attempted to take a picture. Like I saw a picture in my mind, and I went to to actualize that picture. And after a little tweaking in Lightroom, it became an, the actual picture that I had envisioned in my mind. And this, like it or not, I this is this is one of my favorite photos ever. Um, it, it's it's just. It's so crisp and it's exactly what I had envisioned in my mind. Yep. Yep. I love it. And and if, again, if you're only listening to this on audio, click the links in the, in the show notes, or just go to anthonylemos.com and find this picture. Like it, it, if you look through all the pictures, you'll know exactly which one this one is. It's um, the only or, black like white I said, go the to the YouTube. Yeah. Go to the ritual misery YouTube and, and watch this here as well. But, uh, Oh man, yeah, really, really, really great photograph. It uh, it took work. It took fourteen years of photography to get to the point where I could <laughs> get that picture right there. So, yeah, I'm glad well, you liked and it. And it took you a while. Yeah, and it, I mean, it took you a while too to uh, uh, you know, to get it uh, constructed in in the moment as well. Oh like yeah, it. it how I, many I how many through. photos did you take in that set? Like just trying to get that that well, actual picture. I made three attempts because uh, the first two, they were just completely entirely too well lit. And I wasn't getting the, the flash aligner around, you know, the silhouetting around mm-hmm. um, the band. 
the third time I went back there and it was kind of like my last attempt because I knew their set was coming to a close. And I figured, you know what? I'm just going to I'm gonna try it one more time. And then when I went back there to try it, I took a couple pictures, but Jomo wasn't in front of my flash. He was, in, he was off to the side a little bit, so I had to wait for him to get right there in the center. And I got three pictures total with him in the proper placement. And the uh, first one was was uh, uh, slightly out of focus. And it, it can, couldn't be out of focus for the effect that I was looking for. Uh, the second one, uh, which is actually the, the third, of, third one of the three, the third one, he had just slightly moved to the uh, to my left. So I guess his left too, but the stage right. Uh, had moved just a little bit, and my flash was shining too brightly th- between him and one of the guitarists. The middle shot, though, the middle shot is the one that I just showed, and it was perfect. He's got his, j- just his stance. He's, he's directly in front of the flash. So it's, the flash is lighting the stage. The light isn't coming back to me at the camera. And then I've got the two spotlights that are on either side of the stage coming down, and they're just providing accent lights for the other members of the band. And it worked out perfect. Yep. So yeah, fantastic. There's a very short period of time in which that picture could have been captured with the equipment that I had on hand, and I actually got it, and I'm fucking thrilled about it. Yeah, yeah, right on. Uh, I know uh, you posted that one in Instagram, and you got a comment uh, on it from the Possum Posse. Yeah, which I thought was really cool. Hopefully, they call me. I mean, let me know. Use that as the back of your next album. Like, yeah, we can do. Yeah, this. definitely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, man. So yeah, really fun weekend. Uh, we got, we got a lot of great pictures. Um, Anthony Lumos.com once again. And then Amos, what, what is your Instagram again? Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. Yep. And I am Del Noche on Instagram and I right after this. So if you're listening to this, uh, not live, then they should be available now. Uh, go to go to Del Noche on Instagram, and you'll see some of the photos that that I took with my iPhone, um, including some some pictures of Tay Allen in her play. So um, that's really cool. Uh, speaking of folks that that we got pictures of, we're gonna have a guest here in a couple of weeks. I so totally missed whatever it was that you just said because my mixer decided to shut itself off after 10 hours of being on. And well, that's how that works. <laughs> oh, so, man. Timing. The audio gods were angry at me for making fun of you earlier. They came back to bite me at the end. <laughs> that's karma, my friend. Uh, um, yeah. That's what happens. Should I be hitting the music right now? I feel like I should be hitting the music. Uh, yeah, well, hold on a second. So uh, I was setting up our next episode, probably. Uh, oh. I said, speaking of speaking of, of folks that uh, we met this weekend and got some photos of, um, our next guest crunchy, is Crunchy. Crunchy. crunchy and crunchy, I cannot wait. Crunchy, I had a great time on the Friday night event, crunchy, uh, hanging out with Crunchy. crunchy. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Yeah, it, it, it was amazing to to have that conversation with her after not having a a conversation with her in person in so long. It's going to be great to have her back on the show again. Uh, she's got some amazing stories to tell. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, and that live uh, recording looks like it's going to be the twelfth of May. Yeah, it's a uh, Thursday, Amos, you yeah. and I might we might do a show in between. But if not, uh, definitely the twelfth of May, uh, we will have crunchy. So, well, there uh, is. Look forward to that. I, I'm going to go ahead and go on record and say there's no show next week because uh, Amber's out of town, so it'll just be me, me and the kiddos. So mm-hmm. breaking away for a couple hours to do this would not work with that schedule. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely something possible the week after. Okay, so I will yeah, have just been will... just come back from Fairbanks actually, so there might be some stories to tell. Ooh, ooh, yeah, um, yeah. That that is north, <laughs> north Alaska. It's it's not. It's central Alaska. I'm just in southern well, Alaska. Well, north compared to where you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you're already <laughs> in the great frozen north, and this yeah. is even more north. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, it's about six hours north of me. So, right. Um, yeah, yeah I, so we so we might do something then. A but, guess. but if not, uh, Crunchy is our guest on the twelfth of May. So uh, yep. 
check us out there. All right. And uh, of course, if you are interested in any of the music that plays on this podcast, it's either supplied by our amazing audience or by Kevin McLeod, who I don't know. I kind of feel like he's part of our amazing audience too, but you know. He's, he's definitely a, a, a previous guest on Ritual yeah, Wizardry. He's a fan of the show. Future guest, in fact. He's got a, a documentary coming out, and we've been promised a guest spot when, uh, yes. when, when so, his schedule, first, at his first availability. So, Yep. And also, so speaking of that, uh, I'm going to get into contact with the director once again of that documentary and see if he wants to do some promotion uh, with us for that. Hell so, yeah. Oh, yeah. So a possible a possible future guest in there as well. But uh, m- more importantly, though, in Competech dot com uh, to to get a hold of some of Kevin McLeod's amazing work. Right. Or you can just be like the rest of the Internet and rip it off for free. Um, I'm Amos. That's Kent. We are out of here. Thank you so much. This has been your Ritual Misery podcast. See ya. Insert music here. <laughs> oh actually you need to you need to insert the music before that so that so that I fuck it up like normal. It's like when I say the Sia, because we're supposed to get all of our words in before the Oh right before like the, the beat drop or whatever you yeah. and uh, I usually end up because I can't hear the fucking music, I usually end up saying Sia after <laughs> the music gets loud. Yeah. It's cause you wait like four seconds <laughs> after I say Sia before you say Sia. <laughs> Oh, that's not, that's it's, not it's, how that it's goes. like it's like me saying Sia starts a JavaScript runtime that has to call back to a server and go to like a <laughs> it has to run through a Git script, you know, and then load some shit and then like process across the an old one terabyte hard drive from Windows ninety five. It's like <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. A one terabyte hard drive with Windows ninety five? I don't know that. In the history of Earth, that has ever occurred. <laughs> I'm sure it has somewhere. Were they gigabyte hard drives back then? Oh, my yes. God. Yes. Like, oh. the large hard drives. Like, dude, one gigabyte hard drive with Windows 95? I'm not even sure if Windows could write it, to it, a one gigabyte hard drive. It could. It, Windows 95A could write to a one terabyte hard, or one gigabyte hard drive, but not a two gigabyte hard drive. You had to have Windows 95B for that. And B also uh, brought in USB support. Yeah. Yeah. God. God, what was it? Probably a, a SCSI? Was it a SCSI connector back then? Um, Like pre, pre-USB? You were yeah, for, parallel for a hard ports? drive. Like if you, if you had a, an external hard drive. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, it back was in either like 1995. SCSI or um, Firewire. Fire, wait, was Firewire even out in 1995? Yeah, the original Firewire was. Hmm. Yeah, that was a long time ago. I didn't have a computer in 1995. <laughs> no, you bought a word processor. I get no, 99, that was like 96. No, you bought I didn't a even word have processor. That. Yeah, it was probably like, no, it would have been like 98. I, I, I got my first computer in 96, the end, towards the end of 96. That sounds right. Yeah. It was a is a Pentium 2 133. I thought about buying a web TV. I did buy a web TV. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's where I found out that it existed. <laughs> Bad idea. Yeah, I thought about buying one. Um glad I didn't. Glad I decided to get my uh Cap Jack came through 1994 for Firewire. Oh, there we go. Now right that on, that's thanks, not Kevin. the FireWire 400 or 800 that you're used to seeing on your uh, on your computers when it was actually useful. That was. Um, I see you asked. You have a sound blaster. I actually have a sound blaster card in my Windows machine right now. Oh wow! I bought it because I needed uh, additional audio devices for my complex setup before I, I switched over to Mac. Well, before I went fl- switched over to full time Mac, and now. I- I have loop back and audio hijack and I don't need an extra sound card. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if I had a sound blaster in my, my Packard bell. Oh, I'm sure you did. Beast that weighed like fucking hundred pounds. If you had an external, I wouldn't say external. If you had a PCI sound card, it was probably a sound blaster card. Yeah. 
That's, yeah, I think it was. And onboard sound was not the norm back in the late 90s. Damn. Path- oh, Pathway had a, a TI-99 4A. Um, yeah, I don't doubt it, you fucking nerd. You fucking nerd. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. I only wished, dude. That's that's back when like when computers cost like four thousand dollars, and not for some like super fucking amazing gaming rig. Like I'm talking about like just the computer on the shelf that did computer stuff. That was like that was four the grand. amazing gaming rig for the time. Well, right. I mean, yeah, but there was no like you couldn't upgrade the graphics card or anything like that. No, like there was, no. I don't even think there was a graphics card. There was you like. Were, you were oh, playing games one, via mud. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, did you, did you ever yeah. play a mud? Uh, not not like a not any like popular uh, complex fucking thing, but like I did some some text based stuff. Or what about muds? You're talking about the um, this is like BBS type stuff, right? Yeah, like, gra- uh, graphic a inter- gra- uh, 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 non graphical interface, so text based, right? Multi user dungeon. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would call it a mud, but I did do a Star Wars thing on. Well, and it wasn't really BBS. It was it was uh it was it was on the World Wide Web on a forum an early forum, one where you had to like you had trees, <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm talking about, and uh, it was a Star Wars RPG that I was fucking around with for a little while in there. I guess technically it would have been a mud. But like I wasn't nerdy enough to keep doing it, and I didn't really become part of the community that was doing it. So I think it's unfair to say like, "Oh yeah, I was, yep, I was a mud guy back in the day." <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, I think I, I guess I kind of dipped my toes in that arena. I, I found a Dragonlance mud for, that I played for a while, um, not not long after getting married, actually, and that kind of went by the wayside along with the rest of all the fun in my life until Amber came along. <laughs> right. Yep. Yep. And then you had another kid to to play with since you were a yeah, kid. Exactly. You had you had a playmate. Yeah. Oh my god! All the best cartoons came out That's... when Autumn was was young, or when when Amber was young. All the best yeah. cartoons. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Lucas as well. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. I I loved my GI Joe and Transformers and and whatnots from the eighties. Uh. But like nineties cartoon. I mean, eh, all right. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was all right. Um. But yeah, like Avatar: Last Airbender and and so many things on Nickelodeon were absolutely fucking amazing, and that was Lucas I'm, Lucas's childhood. I'm talking about if you've if you've sat down on a first run episode of Blue's Clues with a <laughs> child or with an age appropriate child, yeah, you will oh, have like a an enthusiastic, blast. yes, an enthusiastic oh three year old. Yeah. Yes, it's. Uh, yeah. oh. Talk about interactive TV, man. That shit was wild. Fuck yeah, dude. Or, or um, some oh, Dora. Oh, oh. Call, uh, uh, before I forget, a callback to the pre-show. Uh, I was talking about the Easter egg. Um, my my new decor in the room mm-hmm. is for it's it's right it's right there. I don't know how well it shows up on Twitch, but barely like only it. because I know what it is. Yeah. So this is an amazing. Uh, 3D printed. Let me see if I can. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Let's do. There we or go. Or you could just hold it in your right hand and put it up above the blank wall behind you. I mean, I could do that. That's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do complicated shit. So maybe maybe if I do it this way. Uh, yeah, there we go. So it spins. <laughs> I'm not good at this. Uh, there's a reason that I'm not a uh, like a, 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 a Twitch influencer. Do you see? Well, there's many reasons. There's many reasons. <laughs> that just happens to be one of them. <laughs> Do you see that? Um, I see pop figures. That is Boba Fett. Which would make that? Yeah. I can't see it. It's too small for my <sighs> screen. How is it too small? It's, it looks fine on my screen. Well, yeah, no doubt. Oh, here we go. Full screen yourself. Okay, so there's uh, there's Boba Fett, 
and then um um oh the, is that yeah 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 thanks uh Finnick Shand yeah yeah that's cool you got Lady Justice yeah from Metallica and Thomas Jefferson from Hamilton oh got you got you yep okay is that Wally next to him. Uh, yes, Wally and Eve. Yeah, Eve. And then Forrest Gump on the edge. That's Forrest Gump? That's Forrest Gump. Right. And, then, uh, and now I feel like we, we, we skipped right over Serena Williams. Uh, okay. And, yep. and then you got Chunk, um, uh, uh, Chunk. Oh, Chunk, yeah. I love you, Chunk. Yep. Yeah, he's, doing, he's doing the uh, sloth. He's doing a, who I was doing the shuffle. Yep. You got sloth. Yep. Yep. Um, I love you, junk. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Ruth. Baby <laughs> Ruth. <laughs> yeah. And he wiggles his ear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you What's, guys. When, when's the last time you watched yeah. that movie? Um, not super long ago. It was probably, I probably saw it within the last two years. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Pathway, Rocky Road, Rocky <laughs> Road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's that's a uh, it's one of those movies that like before memes were a thing, they they you could meme that at school. Yeah. You know, somebody would say, Yeah. What kind of ice cream do you like? And you can go, Rocky Road. <laughs> know exactly what you're talking about. Yep. And then you make your weir- your ear wiggle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh, man. Uh, uh, it's another movie that could never be made today. Never, ever. You could, like, I could see, I don't want to see it remade, but part of me kind of wants to see it remade. To see how how it would be today, because the entire you could do that sloth. movie today. I think you could still do a sloth, but you couldn't do that sloth, right? Yeah, right. There's a lot of things that would have to be different. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think if they did it today, I don't think they would have the even the statue with the penis, right? Um, I mean, in you know, you got Ma Fratelli, uh smacking mouth in the back of the head to get him to spit out the last bit of the jewels. Yeah. Like, there's just, there's just there's a some lot things of little that, things. That, because if they if they made that... See, you could make that movie almost exactly if you were making a movie for adults. But the right. target... The target demographic for that movie was kids. Like right. like 10 to, 10 to 15 years old or something like right. that probably was the target demo. And yep. yeah, Which that was the 80s. Which is making it, right? Because I mean, yeah, the adults yeah. already have their version. So, <laughs> no, exactly. So if they made it now, you'd probably still have the same target demo. So like you know, eight to you know, eight to twelve or something like that, yeah. and be the same plot and maybe the same character names, but it would be a completely <laughs> different movie. <laughs> Even that, like Data, his whole character is problematic. Yeah, I mean, there's things you could keep. You could keep his uh, <laughs> love of technology. His name. Yeah, you, you could, I mean, you could even, like, you could make up new, like, Inspector Gadget type fucking, like, yeah. contraptions and gadgets for him. But yeah, but those weren't the problem. I think that's about parts. where it ends. I yeah. think that's about <laughs> where it ends. It's it's him and his family that's the problematic part. Um, yeah. Or or Mouth with the uh, Housekeeper. Uh, yeah, oh, dear God. That's, that's, <laughs> Yeah. Again, yeah, you you wouldn't you wouldn't make a movie for eight year olds with that <laughs> with those scenes. I mean, that was touchy for for us back then. It sure as hell would not fly now. Yeah, not even a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the truffle shuffle. There's no way you'd get that going. That is fat shit uh, finest. Yeah, but I can still see it. It as long as they portrayed the friends as being. The problematic ones, you know what I mean? Like they portrayed them as being bullying to Chunk, but they're more the than heroes. just like, 
Now, now that is an interesting aspect. You could remake the movie with Chunk as the hero. Hunk, you know? Chunk was the hero. He was but, the but hero. I mean, he but I mean, the... it could be like focused only on his experience. <sighs> yeah, but I, but it, again, it would it'd be just a completely different movie. Yeah. Because exactly. he, he missed out on most of the adventures because he got like, he left, he went to go get help and then he got captured and then he was with chunk. And then, then he, then he got, uh, had to do with the cop. Yeah. <laughs> the gremlins then, reference. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, yeah. Pathway says not a remake, but could you make a sequel? Or, or, but you could make a sequel, but I hope they don't. Yeah, I man, I would, I think I'd rather see a remake just to see what kind of a shit show it was, rather or, than seeing a sequel because a sequel or, just or doesn't about, sound interesting to me. How about a sequel that is a remake or a reestablishment, such as like they did with Ghostbusters? Oh yeah, Ghostbusters or Scream or they, they have a name for that shit where it's like a sequel reboot. Yeah, I'm not uh, talking about the way the Scream did it, though. Fuck all that. I'm talking about the way that Ghostbusters did it with this latest yeah, no, Ghostbusters it's, it's movie. Like, the formula was the same, though. You yeah. just like the Ghostbusters IP more than you like the Scream IP, I think. Because well, yeah. the formula was... It's exact. It's the precise same formula. <laughs> but but could they do that with Goonies? <sighs> Fuck. I, I could you know see that. I, could. I could see that. I could, because a lot of the characters... Well, I, I think most... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm secure in saying... Most of the actors from the original movie are still alive. A yep. lot One of, of them, them is Thanos. One of them is Thanos. <laughs> right. A lot Brand of them Thanos. S- still look the same. Ish. You know? Ish. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. I think, so Ma Fratelli is dead. Right. Uh, but I mean, you wouldn't have to have the villains. Like, keep, keep the Fratellis no, out. No, you could, you could actually have the Fratellis. Okay. Yeah, you know, uh, 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 somewhere in the Fratelli lineage, you know, uh, she had a daughter or something, or you know, or, like, well, what? so the the boys, the boys just went to jail. They didn't die, right? So right. they they could be, they could have had, they could have procreated, or hell, right. they might even be fathers in the Before, first movie. Exactly, exactly, and, and we just um, don't know. Yeah, you know, Oregon is still there. Oregon's still a thing. Yeah. Oregon didn't go anywhere. It's still got rocky beaches. So you still got the setting, yeah. right? Pathway says a, a new a newfound map this time made by Mikey. New hidden treasures. No, yeah, that, I could see yeah. Mikey. Mikey, I bet Mikey's like a, a museum curator uh, at, at this time, like you know, kind of following in his his father's. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know because I mean, Sean Astin wouldn't even stick around for the behind the scenes cut of the DVD. I don't know if he's going to come back for or, for a reboot remake. <laughs> I don't know. Every every man has a price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was so pissed off when I was watching that, and all of a sudden, like the I was sitting there thinking, like, where's where's Sean Aston? And then the the entire crew is like, hey, where'd Sean go? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he just That's never funny. came back. Like he disappeared to go piss and just never came back or something. It's called an Irish goodbye, Amos. Yeah, <laughs> no, he, seriously, but he's not Irish. But whatever. Yeah, well. Um, so that settles it. We uh, we definitely need a Goonies reboot. Yeah, filtered off the original IP uh, and not taking away from the original IP. Yeah. God damn it! I think you're right. Like I, I'm kind of down for that now. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. I mean, because there's there's problem with the original Ghostbusters. You know, you, you couldn't refilm that. Too. Well, I guess you could. It would just. It wouldn't carry a PG thirteen rating. It'd be at least you know an R rating. Yeah, um, or it'd be a, a just completely different feel of a movie. Right. So, um, yeah, yeah. I think we're down with that. What is? Um, I'm trying to find. Does anybody know that term? There's a name for that, like reboot sequel formula. The, in fact, I think there's a couple, a couple of names going around that are pretty good. A uh, bile cow wants to know when canceling will get canceled. I think canceling cancellations has already been canceled, and therefore we're canceling again. <laughs> I think it's already. I think it's already looped around, gone like three sixty, and we're in a figure eight now. Uh, 
I, th- I think cancellations yeah. went through a crazy Ivan and we're back to where we started. Yeah, I don't know if we're as bad <laughs> as we were with it. So Halfway I don't says, know. name a, a good dwelling. rebooted movie that wasn't a Western. The latest Ghostbusters movie. Yeah. It was fine. I well, fuck you. I liked it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't know. I I liked it. Like, if you say, "Did you like it?" And uh, my only options are yes and no. The answer is yes. Yeah, but being nuanced as we are, like, I'd give it like I don't know, like a six and a half or something. Oh, uh, I only give it either thumbs yeah. up or thumbs down, and it got a very strong thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, fair. Um, a good a good rebooted movie that wasn't a western. I I'm trying to think. Name a good rebooted movie that was a Western, because I don't like Westerns, so you're kind of ass out of luck. Oh, just, I mean, there's a bunch of those. There's 310 nope. to Yuma. There's, nope. um, um, yeah, and now I'm drawing a complete blank on all of them. Uh, <laughs> I thought three. There's some good Yuma Westerns out there. You like Tombs? Get the fuck out of here. You like Tombstone, right? Yes. Okay. So there you go. There is at least one Western that you like. <laughs> but I don't, I don't like Tombstone because it's a Western. I like Tombstone because it's funny. It's a fucking great movie is what it is. And it happens right, to be in, a Western. In my mind, yeah. I w- yeah, exactly. It's not because it's Western. It happens to be a Western. Oh, no, no, no. For sure. For sure. Like, I like a lot of Westerns. I sure as fuck don't like all Westerns or or any movie because it's a Western. Right. I just like good movies. And Tombstone is one of the best. Um. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Tombstone, Willie, if Tombstone is not on your list, needs to be. Yep. Needs to be. And my name needs to be next to it. <laughs> it's, it's a good goddamn movie. <sighs> oh, man. It's great. Yeah. It's so great. Um. Yeah. He, uh, he asks about Ghostbusters 2 having to be on the list for cinema. I, I would say that Ghostbusters 2 was an unnecessary non or yeah it's it's an unnecessary evil like mm-hmm. you don't have to watch ghostbusters 2 to watch the newest ghostbusters and get along with it just fine no absolutely like I, i'm sure ghostbusters 2 happened in canon with yeah. with ghostbusters afterlife but like i don't i don't know that there's a mention of ghostbusters yeah. 2 it like they don't mention really ivan seemed, they don't mention the baby it really seemed like a a direct uh, well, a a, a, a time I, passage did I say Ivan sequel to Vigo. the original. Yeah, Vigo. Thank you, Pathway. Yeah, I said Ivan for some reason, uh, but Vigo. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ghostbusters Two is unnecessary. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, if, if you liked Ghostbusters, then yeah, uh, go ahead and watch Ghostbusters Two. Like, it's not it's not terrible, but yeah, Amos has the right of it. It's it's unnecessary. <laughs> it's just it's an it's, hour it's and a half of a take or leave you could it. be doing something more productive. Yeah. I but but again, like if you if you like Ghostbusters, like yeah, it's only an hour and a half movie. Like, why not? Like it's it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> you just spend more time with the characters. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> with the original actors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, most yeah, most of them. Most of them made the main made four did bad. right. They all repeated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. The all all four Ghostbusters are in there, and Dana's in there. I mean, that, they're the important ones. I don't remember if Rick Moranis. I don't think Rick Moranis was in the second one, was he? I don't. I don't think so. Um, what about Janice? Was it Janice? Oh, Pathway says uh, says he was or. Oh, he defends them. Oh, well, actually, Captain, Captain Jack and Pathway both said it. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Damn. Yeah, so yeah, I guess it's been too long since I've seen the second one. That's like how little of an impression it made on me. Like, I've seen right. the original one probably, oh, God, I don't know, 30 Several times or more. Times, yeah. Um, Ghostbusters 2, I've probably seen one, two, three times, <laughs> maybe. And like the most recent time was probably. 15, 20 years ago? I don't know. Like, it's just... Nah, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, man. It's fine. Yeah, I see you... Uh, yeah. 
Uh, he said, I, I, I've heard the Ghostbusters video game is the real sequel. Uh, yeah, I've heard that too. I, I've heard a lot of people. Um, I think um, I think TSC and Sam uh, talked about that as well. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've heard a lot of people say that. Like that is the, like if you really care about that world and those characters and you want to know what happens, like you need to check that out. It's got the, like the voice cast is the, you know, the, the real actors and the story is amazing and so on and so yeah. forth. So, yeah. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Like Ghostbusters 2 just, even as a child, it just didn't really leave an impression on me. Yeah. It came out with yeah. like 89 or something. Mm, something like that probably like the best yeah. part about that movie was the Bobby Brown song is that right the what Bobby Brown oh uh, didn't he do the soundtrack I'm pretty sure he did the soundtrack for it because I'm pretty sure he owned the, the, the for Ghostbusters 2 yeah. yeah I don't know like I, I don't remember on our own <laughs> I think it was Bobby Brown's on our own it was the soundtrack on the soundtrack for the movie yeah Christ what is uh there it is, Showbot. Why is this not? Do I have Showbot. to TV no, I don't. slash RMP? Yeah, it didn't autofill for me. That was weird. I had to type it all out. Oh, we didn't tell anybody uh, about our OnlyFans account. Oh yeah. I threw it in the in the notes yeah. and then there was a couple of things we didn't get to. Like I didn't I didn't talk about my credit card getting stolen or any of that stuff. Yeah. Uh which is fine. Anyway, it's all fine. It's all fine. Uh my my card got skimmed somewhere in Austin. Um, there was f- four, five, six, something like that. Uh, fraudulent purchases made in my card, but but my bank um, like canceled them out. I don't have to pay for that. Any of that? I got a new card. All is good. Uh, the only thing that tried to auto clear on my account was Netflix, and it had three denials, and then uh, the fourth one went through with no penalty, no late fee. <laughs> so this so is all good. Um, yeah, so ritualmiser.showbot.tv. Help us pick a title. Um, we've got one submission from W. Scott is one and four submissions from Curtis LaRock. So thank you, you guys. Um, if anybody wants to submit a title, like a last minute title, squeeze in there. Uh, bang S is the command in the Twitch chat. So bang S space and then whatever, you, where do you want it to be? Uh, nerd thank you pathway uh, uh can't, you gotta handle the raid tonight so you should probably get that loaded up okay um yeah so just going through the list here we got mystery hat oh that's uh self-referential for from curtis there we got the tongue was out austin adventures diamonds scammers rogies scoops and more <laughs> that's pretty good uh, founders at a picnic, of course, the aforementioned nerd, and uh, more like Ghostbusters do, Ghostbusters do, like as in Scooby Doo. Um, be sure you guys vote in there too. Ritualmiser.showbot.tv. Yeah. There's no votes. We need them votes. Even if you vote for your own, like vote. Let's go. <laughs> Said Ghostbusters doo doo. Well, have you played with uh, with the new functionality in Showbot yet? I have not. Yeah, I haven't either. Um, I trust that mode, it's though. amazing, though. <laughs> I know. I know. Willie's played with some of that, and he said it's good stuff. We we yeah, had a plan I've, for Austin to actually like play with it and figure it out and yep. do all the things, and absolutely uh, none, none of that came to fruition. Yeah. We we failed on a lot of that stuff that we were gonna do, <laughs> just like every year. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Oh. God damn it. So this is what I was gonna. <sighs> I wanted to get some listener feedback about um, for next year's RMP event in Austin. Uh, we're so our intention for next year is to get the stage at Darwin's. Um, we could have gotten the stage earlier in the planning process, but I told, uh, my guy at Darwin's that don't worry about the stage. We just need a, we just need like a section. We just need like a couple booths and like an area at the bar that's kind of reserved, reserved for us. And there's no problem. Um, then like the day before the event, I found out that we could get Mike TV to perform. So I called my guy in the morning, like, 
dude, like, can I, can I get the stage? Cause I really want the stage now. Cause I got a guy and he's like, no, nah, bro, it's way, way too late. We already booked somebody. So I was like, yeah, oh, fuck. So, uh, our intention is to get the stage next year. Um, obviously, uh, Mike TV is, uh, a potential and somebody that we 100% want the stage. If we can get him to perform. Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, so I'll just leave it there. That's the obvious suggestion for, yeah. for stage events. Cause we're looking to do like maybe minimum an hour, maybe like a two hour show. I mean, three, if we get really stupid and, and, um, and crazy with it. Uh, but, but what sort of variety show events would you like to see at an RMP event i didn't mean to use event twice but uh so other musical acts comedy acts uh stand-up comedy uh games um anyway that sort of thing i I wanted to put that out there to the audience get some some feedback suggestions uh, because it is something that i do want to put some time and thought into into planning it out so that when we reserve the stage we actually have like a presentation to give and not kind of, cause like we did a live show there before an RMP live event, like on the stage and everything. And it was fine, but it wasn't really planned well. And it was just kind of, mm, yeah, well, cool. Yeah, we did it. We did a thing. We checked the box. I, you know, I, mean, I want this to be was, an actual, like, I would say it was over planned. Well, and that might've been part of it too. It was, it, like we planned out the minutes basically, but without, an, without quality content to fill those minutes, I think was the, I don't know. It was, I think it was uh, a good and, first and try. <laughs> so, so, something I'm only going to, I'm only going to say here uh, briefly. And this will be the last time I mention it until it, it comes to fruition. If it comes to fruition, I have a handshake deal with Tay and Mike TV for a collaboration song as the new RMP theme song. That's yeah. So that's if you have, if you have song ideas, <sighs> yes. If, if, you, if you guys want to feel creative, if someone out there wants to reach out to Flavor Toot, um, like, just saying that can become a real <sighs> thing. Dude, yeah, that's some like dream fodder shit. Like, there's there's like, so when we started RMP, a lot of it was just like kind of an excuse for for me and you to talk a lot. And, um, and also it was kind of a callback to when we were in high school thinking that we had had really cool conversations and other people would like to listen to them. So it was kind of like a combination of, of, of those things. Uh, but also we were, we were like diamond club fanboys and wanted like kind of wanted what Brian and Justin had, you know, like an audience that did stuff and made stuff for us. And, like participated with us and, you know, not only just like having a chat, but like things like, you know, you mentioned uh flavor toothpaste, like making stuff for us. Um, Cogswell making stuff for us. Um, BBJ. Yeah. BBJ. Several like, others you know, a lot of, come to mind. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people making stuff for us is like, man, that, that is some, that, that's, that's like, that's what we wanted. It's so fucking amazing. But then like, take that shit to the next level, like uh, dream come true type shit. Like, a Mike TV and Tay Allen collaboration for our theme song? Are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, <laughs> but it might happen. So that's like super fucking cool. And it, it kind of, it reminds me that, that at heart, I'm just a fucking diamond club fanboy that like, this just pretending to have a fucking show on the internet. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like it's, it's, it's so much fun. I, this, this is one of the aspects of doing this thing that I just fucking love. Yep, so great. All right, do you have a raid raid plan set up? Um, well, let's see. Who do we have? We've got uh we got Green Gun Guy. I think we should raid Green Gun Guy. He's only got two viewers at the moment, so I think he would appreciate our would small awesome. gathering over here uh going And what going title did we go with? Um, I don't think we've chosen one yet. We've gone. Right. Okay, no, so my cue for you to have... choose a title couple of them have two votes each. We've got Austin Adventures, and we've got Diamond Scammers, Rogi Scoops, and more. With I, two votes. I like them in that order. I like Austin Adventures as the title, and Diamond Scammers, Rogi Scoops, and more as the uh, tagline. The, the rejoinder thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I like that, too. 
Austin Adventures is very simple, uh, which is actually kind of the beauty of it. Right. It, it kind of you, you're not going to guess at what that episode's about. <laughs> so, so that's that's pretty great. Yeah, I like it. Let's go with it. Austin Adventures. Thank you, Debbie Scott is one for the title submission there, and uh, Curtis the Rock. Thank you as well for uh, for what we're going to use as the the show notes. Um, the witty comment whatever. at the top of the show notes. There you go. Yeah, and and also for your many other suggestions. And that, thank you. That also, I will also invariably to ruin with my own commentary. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to recreate your um, uh, your just defeated tone uh, with, with no hint of sarcasm <laughs> at the beginning when I was talking about audio problems. Uh, I don't think I did very well because I was. I was trying not to laugh. Um, okay. Yeah. So, all right. So there's our title. We're going to raid Green Gun Guy. Um, does anybody have suggestions for a raid call? Um, we could do, um, I don't know, maybe like a um, like a Goonies reference or something. Like a, Oh, uh, like a Hey You Guys uh, raid? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Hey, you guys. Raid are... you guys. Ooh, I kind of like that. Raid you guys. <laughs> it's just dumb enough. Maybe Ruth Or Raid? Rocky Road. Rocky Road. Rocky Road. Let's just go Rocky Road. Let's just it go have to do the question Road. mark, though. Because he asked the question. Yeah. Rocky <laughs> right. <Road>? So. <laughs> so <laughs> God damn it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I find this so funny. Oh, shit. Okay. I, I think it's partially because my impression is so awful, but it still hits the main point. <laughs> like, you wouldn't know what the fuck that was if, if we weren't talking about Goonies, but with um, with me talking oh, about Ro- Goonies, it just hits. Yeah. So how about how about this? this is the right call right here? It's, you guys can just copy and paste that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <clears throat> All right. And then, and then after and then, a short break, we will see you guys in the Discord. Yes, if you're not already a member, uh, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Oh, actually, we've got a we've got a new URL for that. Do you remember what it is? Is it RM? <sighs> Fuck. Is it RMP Discord.com? You were supposed to put it in the show notes. Well, <laughs> no, you. Uh, nope, you're that's the not show it. Notes guy. Or actually, maybe it is. Wait, hold on. No, that's not it. What the fuck? Maybe it's ritual misery dot. Very discord dot com, maybe? Oh my god, we are so good at this. There it is. Ritual misery discord dot com. Yeah, ritual misery discord dot com. Um But yeah, I I think everybody in our chat right now is is already a member. But if you're not, yep. <laughs> ritual misery discord dot com. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, we'll be over there in probably about 10-ish minutes. Uh, but let's go ahead and um, raid Green Gun Guy and give him some love, give him a follow, uh, maybe stick around for a while and check out his content. He's a really cool dude, does some fun stuff. Um, All right, hit the button. All right. I know you got to make I'm just... Uh, Checking this spell. Oh, you're you're pulling on me. I know you gotta be. Oh, I thought you said that you had to. Okay, so here no. we go. Um here we go. We're about to go. Okay, guys. Uh we'll see you over at Green Gun Guy, and then we'll see you in the Discord. Peace. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y.